So Matt, what's the story? So the story is that somebody has told us that the Vatican has priests stationed here in these mountains who are doing research on space and even other inhabitable worlds. So I'm a Jesuit priest, but here in Tucson we have a research base of the Vatican Observatory. No, we are not doing anything strange. We're really doing science. We are not trying to find aliens that we could evangelize. In an intellectual sense, of course, science and doctrines of the world's organized religions are completely incompatible. They have been for hundreds of years. I find it very possible to both believe in stars and a creator. Given the nature of what's required to be part of the Vatican Observatory, you would expect the best scientists wouldn't be a part of it, because the best scientists are the general atheists. In science, what I think is happening is that we are somehow in this very strange dialogue, leading us, inviting us, um, beckoning us deeper into the mystery. So the Vatican Observatory has ties that go back several hundreds of years. But why I find this story particularly interesting now is when I heard about it, I called my friend Dave. He's been a science journalist longer than I could possibly remember. You mentioned this last week. I'd never heard of them before. I asked some people on here, and they basically said, what? Uh, very few people, you know, space journalists even. I just find that really weird. One astronomer, basically, who studies galaxies. Then we have an astronomer who studies stellar populations. The Vatican Observatory is a very small operation. In fact, there are only about 10 active scientists. Because of the curious way we are recruited, in other words, we need to be priests. Some type of a papal observatory has existed since 1582. The Vatican Observatory has been in Tucson since the beginning of 1981, so it's had a formal arrangement with the University of Arizona to have a research group. I think the Vatican Observatory doesn't have a, a big press office like, uh, like some of the rest of us do. So They came here when their site in Italy became too light polluted to really do forefront research. It didn't shock me when I found out that the Catholic Church was worried about dates and calendars. And what did surprise me was when I came here to Arizona and started meeting Vatican uh, observatory astronomers to find out that they also were interested in magnetic white dwarfs and asteroids and something more than just the calendar. That, that was cool and that was a bit of a surprise. The Vatican Observatory has never been a leading research establishment. That doesn't mean they're doing nonsense research. And as long as their mythology doesn't get in the way of their science, uh, it doesn't particularly bother me. Chris, what's going on right now? Where are we and what are these things around us? Uh, we're at the University of Arizona Mount Lemmon Sky Center. We're about 9,000 feet at the summit of Mount Lemmon. Uh, this is also known as Mount Lemmon Observatory. It's one of the facilities owned by the University of Arizona's Stewart Observatory. Is there some sort of conflict between belief in what the Bible has offered upon the creation of, of the Earth and research into what you're looking at, and that is inhabitable worlds? in other stars. I don't think so. Um, I don't think the Bible has much to say on the topic. And Nicholas of Cuso was probably the first individual who actually came up with the idea because the Earth is habitable and the, her, the Earth is a heavenly body. Other heavenly bodies are probably inhabitable too. And if they're habitable, they're probably inhabited. Well, so we are in a grinding and polishing room at the Mirror Lab. And these mirrors are used for large-scale telescopes, is that right? It will be used in a very unique facility which will map the whole sky visible from that spot twice a week. I think people that are drawn to big questions of faith are also drawn to astronomy because you're asking very big questions. These are the physical principles underlying the MK sequence. I study stars with all kinds of um, 
compositions. All this certainly does connect me with the Creator. God understands that as well. I've been a scientist for over 35 years and I've never heard the word mentioned in any scientific uh, meetings because God is unnecessary. We never discuss it because to understand the universe, you don't need to. God has been redundant for a long time. When it comes to astrophysics and the church, in fact, uh, I'm more and more beginning to realize that uh, there is a very deep connection between the two. And trying to understand it uh, realizes that the universe, in fact, wants to be understood.